All right, so today on Tamron, they're talking about sperm donors, right? And contacting your sperm donor through, you know, the company, the lab, right? That the man donated his sperm in, right? Now, you as a Christian can't judge this, right? That's why Jesus said, judge not, least ye be judged, right? That young lady there is just as a viable offspring, right? As if two couples had had sex and conceived her as well, right? And you're not to judge it, right? Now, the thing is, none of us are perfect, though, right? <laughs> All of us do things slightly differently or slightly the same, right? Now, you ask me, why did I write Sheena a hundred letters over a nine month to actually a hundred and twenty month period, right? Well, yeah, yeah, all right, something like that, right? A hundred letters over a three month period, right? Well, one, we had a quick relationship, right? We were together on the island for three days, right? Now, Davis's Bible studies was mainly what I was writing to her and sending to her. Right? Right. One at a time, right? However long it took me to write it up, I sent it out, but I also wrote her other letters, right? Telling her about my life in Georgia, idiot, right? <laughs> what else am I supposed to do, right? <laughs> She's my new girlfriend, right? Hmm. Now, within a month, though, I'm fasting about being one of the two witnesses and all that, too, right? And I'm telling her about that, too, right? Now, my Bible says this, but to do good and communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. What does that mean, right? You communicate with your new girlfriend. You tell her about your life. You tell her about growing up in Georgia. You tell her about your ex-girlfriends. <laughs> That's all I need to do as well, I know, right? I tried to leave the shipmates out of it, but right. <laughs> mainly focus on me being the 23-year-old sailor, right? I know. And what happened to me before I joined the Navy and things we didn't get to talk about. Right? During the three days we actually were Getting to know each other, right? <laughs> See, that's when, you know, you tell her about, you know, things both good and bad, right? Now, sometimes, like I told you, if after a few weeks she stops writing you, right, you might get a little defensive in your letter writings and start being a little sarcastic because you don't know what's going on, right? And if you don't break up with you till a month later after you're asking her to marry you, right? Which you're doing that because of the scriptures that say if a couple has premarital sex and are unbetrothed right, to another person, you shall surely endow them to be your wife or your husband, right? Like, versa, right? If you're male or female, right? You ask them to marry you, right? Now, they can refuse, right, the request, but then you're going to be confused as to why. Plus, you're not working together. You're not on the same ship. You're just in the Navy together, right? That's a different way of looking at it, but it's also true. <laughs> now, most sexual harassment situations... The people are on the same ship, like with me, King, and Ben, right? See, that's sexual harassment because they're supposed to train me, right? They're not supposed to quid pro quo me and ask me for sex in lieu of training, right? Which is what they were doing, right? I didn't even know they were doing it, by the way, right? I just thought they were being assholes of what work would be in, you know, one of the sex or something, but, you know, I wasn't gonna do it with him so that was no problem but I still didn't get the training uh, I was supposed to get and work on the ship right and be trained to be an electrician on the ship uh, 
Because I never seen half the equipment on the ship before, idiot. Right. I don't even know what it looks like. <laughs> right. I know where the area is with the work cart, right? But not the piece of equipment I'm supposed to work on. Hence, like I told you before, the confusion about working on the phone jack instead of the logic circuits for the elevator. Right? But now, after they got busted, right? For not training me correctly, right? They still didn't change their attitude towards not training me, I you know. <laughs> and by the time Robertson got, Robinson got on and other people, right? I, I'm just kind of, you know, left behind, right? With no training, not even knowing what I'm supposed to be working on still, right? Trying to do a job I can't really do, right? Without the missing information, right? The missing information is I didn't know what half the equipment was they wanted me to work on, right? Or what it even looked like, right? <laughs> I knew the location. I knew where it was supposed to be. I could, you know, look over it and make sure there wasn't no, nothing out of place, right? And that the wires were intact and everything looked good, right? I could do that part of it. I could even shut the stuff off with the red tags and then turn it back on, right? And they would sign the red tags for me, too, right? Without verifying if they were hung or not. See, they're not supposed to do that either, right? <laughs> so they're already teaching me bad things as soon as I get to the ship, right? Not me, right? I don't know what I'm doing, right? I've never worked as a shipboard electrician a day in my life, right? Until I got into the Navy. And they were supposed to train me. And they weren't. And said they were asking me for sex. What is that? Quid pro quo. Quid pro quo. But I didn't know it. Right? See? <laughs> I didn't know what they were up to. <laughs> I was giving them. The, just They were being assholes. Like people in school trying to make me gay. But I wouldn't do it. <laughs> See? I can say no to sex. And I was saying no to anything. Right? And I know I was saying that when I know I was saying no. <laughs> you might not have said no. You might would say no and yes. I don't know you. I don't know you. <laughs> I just know what I had to deal with was not kosher or, or part of naval training at all. Right? <laughs> <sighs> and it was a resentment because I would say no right? <laughs> to the sex proposal. Right? And if you ask me more than three times, what does that mean in baseball? Three strikes and you're out on yourself. You're wanting sex with another co-worker, which is sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. And this happened before two years before I met Sheena, right? Anyway, anyway. <laughs> now, I'm not even talking to her about that at first. In the letters, just things I went through growing up. Including my ex-girlfriend, some of the things like that, probably, right? I really, right, like I said, don't really remember the actual number of letters I wrote to her, right? But it was like one a day, right, maybe, right? Is that too many, too little, right? <laughs> you never heard of people writing letters like that to their loved ones at sea, right? Hello? <laughs> Look at past relationships where they did letter writing. Right? How many were written a day? Right. To the loved ones. Once a day, twice a day. Even in the notebook, right? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> right. They were wartime lovers, right? And writing each other. And then she developed Alzheimer's and all that. And he's telling her the story. Blah, 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 right. And again... He's writing her, but she's not responding back to him, right? Why? Because the mom was interfering. The mom was interfering. See what I mean? Right. <laughs> and that's the point, too. People think they know what's good for you when they don't, right? Or what's bad for you when they don't, right? People interfere, right? Even my shipmates, by not training me, were causing me to act odd towards Sheena if that was the problem, right? 
I was just doing what I thought was normal <laughs> for two different people on two different ships to write each other, right? Every day. Every day. <laughs> Is that unheard of in that situation, right? No, actually, it's not. Actually, it's not. <laughs> If you really love someone, you're going to write them every day. You ever heard of that from a pen pal? Right. And even if you're just telling them general stuff about you or sending them Bible studies or whatever, right? I don't know what happened, right? Because <laughs> the communication stopped with her shortly after... We started talking in the first place, and I don't know what happened, right? The few letters I got after were vague. She put a different name on the letter. <laughs> Tina something, right, right. And see, whether she know it's, knew it or not, that's my aunt's name, Tina, right? Coincidentally, right, whatever the hell she's going through herself on her ship, I don't know, right? But she's acting crazy to me, too, right? <laughs> I don't know what's going on with her. I don't know why she's acting or don't want to get into a relationship or marry me, right? But I was taught that, right? <laughs> the other idea about premarital sex is as long as you get married within a reasonable amount of time, <laughs> you can have the premarital sex. But, of course, you can also break up with the person. But who determines when it's over, right? Well, if you had sex, you could have gotten her pregnant. Right? So, I don't know if she's being hormonal or what, right? I don't know. Why she's acting so crazy or if my shipmates aren't fucking with her, right? See, if they're writing her letters too, not all of the hundred letters were my letters, right? But some of them were theirs then, right? I don't know what's going on, right? Either if someone's sabotaging my girlfriend and writing her letters in my name, right? But the way they could is when I started getting letters from her, from the ship, from her ship to my ship, as soon as they got a, her address, right, they were, tightened up letters and started writing her in my name, right? Which I can't do nothing about, right? right. If they did, that. uh I don't even know they did or not, right? But if I'm sending her Bible studies from Pastor Davis and he wrote up a bunch, right? So like between 30 to 50, and I'm sending them to her once a day or something, right? That's already, I know, within the first 30 days, 30 letters, right? Just if I'm writing, sending her the Bible studies, right? <laughs> now that's all I know I was doing and telling her about things I didn't get to bring up during their brief encounter, right? For three days, right? <laughs> right? And we were at port for over a week, actually, right? <laughs> we met the last three days of that week, right? Right. We hooked up the middle day, right, the second day, and then the third day I just went to her ship and we kind of hung out, right? And then I went back to mine, and that's all I know that happened, I know. Now, she started writing me almost immediately, and I did her, right? Mm -hmm. And it seemed good until a certain point, right? She quit writing, right? I don't know why, I don't know why. <laughs> But I do know I would tell her about the two witness thing eventually and da 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 right? About the dream and my interpretation of the dream, right? Just by reading the Bible, I can get that and think that's the word of God, right? And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? So God also told me through the scriptures I was one of the two witnesses by giving me the dream, right? You understand? I'm not saying he talked into my head until 93, right? But before I joined the Navy, I never went around telling people, God's talking to me. I'm hearing the voice of God. Listen to me now, right? Either, either, right? 
It wasn't until 93 that I actually heard the voices after fasting and blah, 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 blah right? Being on the 12 of fours, right? Which means I'm a little sleep deprived, right? I don't know. And I'm also praying to God to give me a revelation if I could marry Sheena or not, right? And it said something about Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem three times, right? And that was when we got the Sicily together, right? That's a month later, I think, or two weeks or something. <laughs> whatever it was, whatever it was. <laughs> I might have forgotten some details. I might remember some details more than she does, less than she does. I don't know, right? Also, if other people are writing for to her and making her think I don't love her or whatever, sabotaging the relationship, right? It can only be the shipmates who get the mail and give it to me, right? See, then they would see her letter. They let me get it, right? A few times, right? But they can also get her address and write her. <laughs> That's why I'm a little bit confused about the number of letters they're saying I wrote to her as well. I don't think I really wrote her a hundred letters, right? In a month or three months, right? But most of them were Bible studies from Davis, right? That he had typed up, right? And had available to his congregation, right? From the church in Waukegan that I got before I even got to the ship or got to Norfolk, right? I got a bunch of Bible studies. They would also, once I baptized my sister Renee, right? In the tub, in the tub. <laughs> and she had on her bathing suit, by the way, <laughs> We didn't do it awkwardly or she wasn't naked or anything. <laughs> uh, neither, neither. <laughs> but again, right, I told them about baptizing her. They started sending her stuff. Though I don't know how often they did. I don't know. Right, right. As a kid. I don't know. But she could tell you. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> But now that probably eventually stopped too, right? Once I had the falling out the second time, and right? Then the third time, and then I came back to Georgia, and me and Pastor Thomas were having issues about the two witnesses thing too, right? So that's the real story in a nutshell. But just because I'm the two witnesses don't mean it's 100% over. You still could have a thousand years. And then the millennial reign of Christ begins, See, I'm a backup. John's saying, by a certain time before Jesus returns, God will raise up two witnesses who stand before the God of the earth. <laughs> One pair is called the olive tree, and the other pair are called the co the, oh, <laughs> the candlesticks. Who scripturally could be the olive trees and who the candlesticks? Two men and two women, right? When you misinterpret something, right? Badly. <laughs> Badly. You're wrong. From the day you start misinterpreting it, right? Until the end, when God raises up the two witnesses and tells you you've been misinterpreting it, fool. <laughs> and we're not calling you a fool, we're calling you a fool who is not getting the truth of God, right? Right. We don't tell you to judge you under condemnation, but you're being foolish, right? Because you're not hearing what the scripture is really saying to the churches, right? <laughs> and that's how God taught to us in the Old Testament and you and you. Now, the thing is, the New Testament also changes the law and makes it more graceful. <laughs> what you're trying to do is make it more strict <laughs> and condemning, right? You're telling people now when Moses told them then they could have premarital sex that they can't at all, right? Bible never said that, right? Paul never said that. In fact, Paul is giving his opinion right? and says as much. He received no commandment from the Lord, but I, as a man of a Pharisee, he's an artist, you know, for the murder. 
I'm giving you my opinion, right? He's giving you his opinion after that, right? Now, the thing about someone's opinion, right, is this how they feel, not necessarily what the Lord commanded Moses, right? Now, if Paul's contradicting Moses, right, or you think he is, he can't, right? And you can't either, right? You can't tell people they can't have premarital sex if Moses said they could as long as they're unmarried and get married, right? Or unbetrothed and get betrothed, right? That's the point of premarital sex, right? If you have it or not. You can have it, right? But the sin ain't the premarital sex. Nor is it if the father refuses the marriage, nor if it if the girl breaks up with you herself, right? All of those things can happen, and if you had the premarital sex, it's either yours or the other person's fault, but you are trying to marry them, and if they say no, you're going to let them go eventually, right? That's the whole point to it. <laughs> yes, it is. That's stating, idiot. <laughs> In your Bible, too. People have sex, right? Before they get married sometimes, right? Some people break up after the sex. Some don't even have sex, but that's how it works out, right? That's everybody, right? <laughs> even gay people, if they're trying to date other gay people, have to deal with the same problems of dating, right? One is infidelity. One is faithfulness. One is, do you love each other or are you just having sex, right? If you're just having sex, it don't matter because you got AIDS, you got this, you got that, you got STDs, you got... You gotta use condoms. You gotta, and again, right. <laughs> it's all complicated today. But the law is general rules, right? Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Right? <laughs> Ten Commandments, right? <laughs> But they're general, right? Moses also allows for divorce, like Jesus pointed out too, right? But it is your hardness of heart. If you were perfect, you could stay with one woman for the rest of your life. But if you're not, you can divorce her, right? That's what he means, I know. Now, the thing is, if you don't love the woman, right, and you just staying with her out of obligation to marriage, that ain't going to help, right? That's going to make it worse, right? If you fall out of love with someone, you're better to divorce them than stay with them and hate to their guts the whole time, right? The Bible don't say that either, though. <laughs> There's also such a thing as being too cruel, right? Or too cursed by the law, right? In other words, what you're doing there is... You're just staying together for not because you love each other, right? But because of the obligation, right? And then you're just going through a routine, right? Even if you're faithful to each other, right? And you don't cheat, right? Your mind is what's cheating already. If you even look upon a person and you're married, right? Right? To lust after them. You think committed adultery in your heart. Right. If you're single. Right. And you're trying to date. A single person. Right. And you have premarital sex. Right. Both parties can break up the relationship at any time. Or keep the relationship going. Right. It's the point. Right. Single can be with single. But married is supposed to stay with the partner they married, right? If you're not married, you're not held by the same standard, right? Until you're married, right? And you can also divorce, right? Moses of the law allows for that too, right? The woman at the well had five husbands. Right? And was living with a dude, right? You can't judge her because Jesus didn't judge her. Or you're missing the whole point. And if you're happily married, stay with your partner. I'm not saying break up. <laughs> but I am warning you about lusting after another male or female if you're married, right? 
So was Jesus saying that. So was Paul, even when dealing with gay people, right? <laughs> He, he talked about, again, faithfulness in marriage after that. Do you commit adultery? Do you lust after other women? Right. Or if you're a woman, do you lust after other men like Potiphar's wife? Right. See, both apply. I know. <laughs> you can't lust after another man, right? And he can't lust after another woman, or you're both committing adultery in your heart, right? Now, heart is here, right? Mind is here, right, which controls your strength here, right? Soul is your spirit passing through your body in the blood. In the blood, the blood is in the life. The life is in the blood, right? Okay, that's where the myth of vampires came in, right? Too that if you drink the blood, you can live forever. No, you're drinking a mortal's blood, so you can't live forever. Only an immortal, right? In contact with something immortal can help you live forever. <laughs> By the way, not something that dies, right? <laughs> now, maybe something that can resurrect the dead, Peter, <laughs> and the 12 and the 500 and whoever right, was around Jesus could be resurrected, right? But there's only a limited number who were. Mm -hmm. Now, from there to now, I might go into heaven with Jesus at the end right, of my life, right? If I have to go to Jerusalem or not. And that depends on the rebuilding of the temple. <laughs> right. And they're trying to do that too, right? But the problem is the Palestinians, right? Don't want the temple rebuilt, right? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So I'm good. <laughs> I ain't even worried about that right now, right? But I still want a wife or a companion, right? Female. Mm -hmm. And I always was attracted to females, right? That's the difference, too, right? When you're single, you're lucky. <laughs> you can look, but not touch. <laughs> right? Even though not to even touch the tree leaves you die, right? Well, okay. That means look, but don't touch, right? <laughs> Even in relationships, right? Until you find someone, right? To take away your honey. <laughs> That's what you're looking for, right? The next person who might can be the one, right? That's what we're all taught to look for, even if you're gay, right? Mm -hmm. You want a partner who will treat you right, not wrong, right? That's everybody, That's everybody. <laughs> Looking for a relationship. Well, it depends on who wrote it. Was it Joshua or Moses' wife, right? We don't know. We don't know. See, the author of the first five books of Moses is writing about Moses himself, right? But Moses would say, I, me and my sister. <laughs> My sister put me in the ark and took me down the river. A biographer would say Moses was put in the ark and went down the river. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whoever wrote it is writing about Moses, but it ain't Moses themselves, right? It's like, again, the pharaohs would do, right? In Egypt, I don't know. When they are setting up their tomb, they put the hieroglyphs in the tomb, right? To tell you about the Pharaoh's life, right? Okay, and the gods and all that, and the light bulbs and all that. <laughs> right? Ancient aliens, right? <laughs> and again, they could have technology we no longer have. <laughs> Two. Mm hmm. It's the whole point to everything, right? But we don't know everything they knew either, right? <laughs> they did some extraordinary things. We can't even phantom how they did it, right? Though there were rumors there were giants back then, right? Even Cyclopses with one eye, right? 
We don't know there were or weren't because they were killed off by Hercules or the other gods, right? <laughs> and myth has to be based somewhat in reality, right? <laughs> Even the Trojan horse they thought was a myth until they found the city of Troy, right? Which had to do with it. <laughs> it had to do with it, right? There's a real city of Troy, right? I know. <laughs> and there was a real Greek king, right? Who had a wife named Helen who the prince of Troy fell in love with and she went to be with him. <laughs> this too, though, is the woman's choice, but Agamemnon, which I think that was his name, right? Went after her, right? <laughs> he wanted her back, right? right? Even if she chose the Prince of Troy, right? Some men covet right? a woman, even if she doesn't want to be with them, especially if they're a king, right? It's like Guinevere and Arthur, right? <laughs> and Sir Lancelot. <laughs> funny name, funny name. He lances a lot. Uh -oh. <laughs> Even went after the queen, right? Even him and Guinevere may have fallen in love. <laughs> Though she's the queen, so she married Arthur first, right? And it's rumored one of the myths involves him having to kill her over the adultery because it's treason, right? If you're a king and your queen sleeps with another knight, right? right? <laughs> That's adultery, and that's the penalty of death, right? <laughs> Back then. <laughs> and he was trying to burn her at the stake, but Lancelot saved her or something. I mean, that's another rumor. The other rumor is she went into a nunnery, right? <laughs> or something like that, right? And again, it's a myth, right? We don't even know if King Arthur is real or Guinevere or Berlin or any of that, but we... Like the story, the romanticism of it, right? And even I know that story, right? <laughs> so I was trying to do with Sheena what I thought was right, and she's the only one I wrote that way, too, right? Now, I did write Mary Bell a little bit, but that's, again, because her mom started interfering in the relationship, and something, yeah. <laughs> I'm starting to see the Stephen around her more, right? He even takes off with her and heads down the interstate, and I think he's kidnapping her and <laughs> try to follow them, but run out of gas because I didn't plan on it. <laughs> Great. And someone had to get me a tank of gas to get back home, right? <laughs> Ain't that crazy, right? <laughs> but I'm also trying to protect her. I don't know what's going on. I don't know this dude from a lump of clay, and she does, but right. <laughs> He's not taking her, I don't know, somewhere I recognize, right? So, of course, I'm following him because, again, right, I think he's kidnapping her and taking her upstate or something right, to Richmond, right? And I don't know what's going on, right? And, like I told you, each relationship you're in, it takes two to make a thing go right or wrong. <laughs> Or to confuse the partner, right? And like I told you, I know. It did feel like it was mainly sexual with her, right? And eventually, after I moved back to Georgia, I couldn't keep up the relationship, right? Which is what caused me to be with Michelle, too, and then break up with Mary Bell, right? Too, right? But both had different issues, right? <laughs> now, I'm not just with one woman, right? <laughs> or... Not trying to date legally in the present day world, right? Which the Bible covers all that, right? You're not following it right. Because <laughs> it never said we can't have premarital sex. You're saying that, right? And with that, I'll bid you adieu, right? Ooh.